All children start out naturally curious and love to learn. When they are sent to school, instead of learning, it is a repeated process of memorizing and regurgitating information. The better you are at regurgitating this information, the better you will do in the school system. The real education is obeying authority. We are taught to ask permission. We are taught not to think outside the box. We are taught multiculturalism, drug, sex, and death education. We are taught to memorize and regurgitate information, an input-output process not unlike a computer or a slave. We are taught to respond to a bell, just like a factory floor. We are taught to keep our head down and just make it through the day. We are taught to lower our expectations, and that is just school. Outside of school, our communication is destroyed as people literally lose the ability to speak and relate to one another. Our financial education is one of slaves encouraging debt. Our political system is one of false choices. Our media is normalizing narcissistic behavior. We are not taught to develop critical thinking. We are not taught about debt-based money and the principles that our founding fathers fought for. We are not taught to cooperate and view each other as a team with individual talents and gifts. We are not taught to question authority or even the facts demanded of us. We are indoctrinated, not educated. Indoctrinated like little slaves. The secret of American schooling is that it does not teach the way children learn, nor is it supposed to. Schools were conceived to serve the economy and the social order rather than the kids and the families. That is why it's compulsory. As a consequence, the school cannot help anybody grow up because its prime directive is to retard maturity. It does it by teaching that everything is difficult, that other people run our lives, that our neighbors are untrustworthy and even dangerous. School is the first impression children get of society because first impressions are often the most decisive ones. School imprints kids with fear, suspicion of one another, and certain addictions for life. It ambushes natural intuition, faith, and love of adventure, wiping these out in favor of gospel of rational procedure and rational management. Between 1906 and 1920, a handful of world-famous industrialists and financiers together in their own private foundations handpicked university administrators, house politicians, and spent more attention and more money towards forced schooling than the national government did. Andrew Carnegie and John D. Rockefeller spent more money than the government did between 1900 and 1920 on education. The system of modern schooling was constructed outside of the public eye and outside the public's representatives. In our dreams, people yield themselves with perfect docility to our molding hands. The present education conventions of intellectual and character education fade from their minds. And unhampered by tradition, we work our own goodwill upon a grateful and responsive folk. We shall not try to make these people or any of their children into philosophers or men of science. We have not to raise up them as authors, educators, poets, or men of letters. We shall not search for great artists, painters, musicians, or, nor lawyers, doctors, preachers, politicians, statesmen, all of whom we have ample supply of. The task is simple. We will organize the children and teach them in a perfect way the things their fathers and mothers are doing in an imperfect way. John D. Rockefeller the aim of public education is not to fill the young of the species with knowledge and awaken their intelligence. Nothing could be further from the truth. The aim is simply to reduce as many individuals as possible to the same safe level, to breed and train standardized citizenry, to put down dissidents and originality. That is the aim of the United States. H. L. Mencken This lowest common denominator citizen is most useful in a corporate, military, or a welfare state. Corporations, governments, and militaries do not deal with dissent effectively, so it is in their best interest not to have participants that question anything. When I joined the Marine Corps, they didn't beat around the bush about this idea. In boot camp, they wanted instant and willing obedience to orders. Everywhere else in your life, you will learn the same lesson, only more subtly. And this is why military men are most sought for corporate jobs. Education should aim at destroying free will, so that after pupils left school, they shall be incapable throughout the rest of their lives of thinking and acting otherwise than their schoolmasters would have wished. Bertrand Russell Our education system is centered on an input-output process of information. Our success or failure depends on our efficiency of taking what the teacher tells us and then regurgitating that same information onto an exam. Those that are able to blindly regurgitate information the best are rewarded with higher grades. They are told that they are smart, when in fact they are just thoroughly indoctrinated. This input-output process is no different than a computer or what a slave does. You give it a command, and it just does it, without question. This system was carefully created to mold us into what we are today. 
The masses blindly flow through this education system and naturally fed into centralized systems that want good, little, obedient workers who take orders without question. We all know that person who is very smart, or indoctrinated, that excels in a corporation, military, or government job, and yet they lack any real street smarts to see what's really going on in their lives. When you understand that their mind only functions on what they are told, it becomes clear to you that they are only able to be successful in a centralized system where taking orders is a way of life. I think, therefore I am. It is a classical philosophical statement on human consciousness and existence. But what about the people who do not really think? Do they really exist? This input-output mindset is reinforced outside of school and the career world. Our society is all about what is popular. From early on in our lives, we are pressured into doing what's popular, not what's best for you. This is a way a collective gets individuals to sacrifice what is unique and special about themselves, to become the lowest common denominator in a group that really doesn't care about you at all. The most brilliant propagandist technique will yield no success unless one fundamental principle is born in the mind constantly. You must confine itself to a few points and repeat it to them over and over again. Joseph Goebbels When you look at our news or political debate, it is driven by talking points where they are repeated with such accuracy it's scary. Talk show host Conan O'Brien may be about to push the envelope on late night television. Conan O'Brien may be able to push the envelope on late night television. Conan O'Brien may be about to push the envelope on late night television. Conan O'Brien may be about to push the envelope on late night television. Conan O'Brien may be about to push the envelope on his late night television. Conan O'Brien may be about to push the envelope on late night television. Conan O'Brien may be about to push the envelope on late night television. Well, Conan O'Brien may be about to push the envelope on late night TV. Conan O'Brien may be about to push the envelope on late night television. Conan O'Brien may be about to push the envelope on late night television. Conan O'Brien may be about to push the envelope once again on late night TV. Conan O'Brien may be about to push the envelope on late night television. Conan O'Brien is looking to push the envelope on late night television. Conan O'Brien may be about to push the envelope on late night TV. Conan O'Brien may be about to push the envelope on late night television. Conan O'Brien may be about to push the envelope on late night television. Conan O'Brien may be about to push the envelope on late night television. Conan O'Brien may be preparing to push the late night envelope. Intellectual debate in this society somehow passes for those who can scream their talking points the loudest over the other. This is done purposely to get a confrontational emotional reaction from the indoctrinated and to dissuade the logical and independent thinker from even entering the debate. Through this process, the collective is intellectually safe from any challenge to its power. Do your thoughts serve to free you, or simply to make you freely serve? These talking points are created by people who do think about how to control societies. They weave this input-output slave thought into a Hegelian dialectic that they control. They essentially have a society that bickers over issues that have no real importance on the real power of the world. They use hot-button, emotional issues like abortion or gays in the military to divide and conquer us, while they laugh all the way to the bank, march us off to the war, and destroy our constitution. What about those of us who did not do well in this indoctrination environment? I was one of those kids that did not do very well in school. I knew from a very early age that what was being pumped into my head was not what was going to make me a better person. I knew that the most successful people that I knew did not have jobs or went along with the crowd, yet our school teaches us to get jobs and do what we were told. I knew that our school system wanted me to learn about sex, drugs, death, multiculturalism, much more than issues that would have driven my success like economics, history, and psychology. They wanted me to drone on senseless and boring topics instead of inspiring me to a higher, better self through art, music, and philosophy. What they were really teaching me was to keep my head down and deal with their system. These days, those that are restless in this indoctrination environment run the risk of being drugged. 